Hi there, this is a follow up to the previous video. Uh, the one with the PCB was the same family, same firmware, but from a different model. Uh, not only was it uh, the different model, but it also was a completely different size. So it was in three terabytes in size when we needed something that was four terabyte. And in the previous video, we mentioned that uh, it was not working and causing the drive to click because it was missing head zero. So in this exercise, I wanted to share with you, uh, can I manipulate that incorrect PCB to work just by enabling head zero? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open up the PC3000 and turn this drive on. And uh, what I've done is I've actually put back the original ROM uh, from, from this drive. And you can actually hear it clicking as it did in the previous video because it's got the incorrect board uh, with the incorrect PCB. No, let me rephrase that. It's got a correct board but with the wrong uh, ROM information. Uh, from a different family, a different size, but a compatible PCB. So we're going to start the PC3000 here. Right, so as I mentioned, we have uh, six read write heads uh, in this one, uh, but it's only using five, and he head zero is missing. It's from a three terabyte drive, uh, but the drive we're actually wanting to recover, and I'll go back to this, is actually a four terabyte uh, WD40EFRX. And this board was purchased as a uh, refurbished board, uh, but it came from a different model. And it was from a smaller model, uh, but it had the same firmware, and the printed circuit board uh, matched compatible numbers to work for this 4 terabyte drive. So we're missing head zero. So what would happen if we went into ROM, ROM head map editing, and we were able to see if we can enable head zero. So we've got six heads, um, and there was only five heads now uh, in use. We know there's six heads in here, uh, so we're going to enable head zero. Okay, we're going to repower this drive. Okay, the clicking stop, the drives come ready. Let's see if we get an ID. And we do. So this is interesting. So not only do we have the correct size and four terabytes, uh, but we also have, let's see, UH1. Yeah, we actually have the correct serial number, but the wrong model number. Still in relation to the three terabyte, but it's now four terabytes in size. So um, enabling head zero actually got the drive up and running. Now, are we able to clone this drive and get sector ac access? Let's find out. I've got a donor drive here that I'm just turning on. Actually, probably what a uh, good thing to do might be to see if, let me log out of this, go back in. And it's even seen as normal. Ah, oh, that's right. I have to manually do this as Rembrandt. That's fine.
it's definitely running a little slower but this was a previous recovery we got a uh, full recovery off the drive um, it did need internal read write heads at one point uh, so this is what's in it this is purely experimental uh, like I said to to see if we could get an incorrect printed circuit board to work uh, manually by enabling a head that was missing right let's cancel this So what I'm wanting to know is, can I read the first sector and the last sector of this drive? And it appears so. So that's the first sector. We will uh, go to the final sector. We can read that. So things are looking good. Let's see if I can clone it. So you'll see that it's uh, the model number is still a three terabyte. We're cloning a four terabyte with a three terabyte board. And we'll go to the map so we can see. <laughs> it's certainly not happy. Let's see if I can repower this. And there we go. So every sector that's green is being duplicated to a donor drive. And uh, looks like we've got a real shot at recovering this drive if we needed to. Just by manipulating the head that was missing on a incorrect ROM on a compatible board. So once again, thanks, thanks for watching.